start recording. Oh, I forgot to do that. Actually, I ran out of time. That's just that's for multi-threading, but okay. So did I skip the page? No. Okay. So the date time module is basically date and time. Right, so you can do if you want anything to do with at a certain time, at a certain date, in a certain amount of time, after a certain amount of time, uh, the number of days from now, the number of seconds, you'll need to use date time. You can also use time dot time, but again, who can remember what time dot time is? Seconds since like nineteen January first, uh, nineteen seventy. Nineteen seventy. Yeah, I don't think it's not. Mid, it's January first, like six p.m. Like it's not midnight or anything. Oh. I can't remember actually. But uh, should be right here. Oh no, 12 a.m. I was wrong. So, hello. Oh god, it's like a rewind. It's it's rewind. rewind. <laughs> anyway, so, <clears throat> so date time again. I'm gonna go through a little bit of this in the shell. Um, I just want to show you guys how it works. It's not necessarily like. This is useful if you're doing stuff with date and time, and that's basically it. Multi-threading is useful for everything. So we're not going to – we'll spend more – and it's more complex multi-threading because you have to understand the concepts. With date and time and time.time .time is basically – I know I can get a certain amount of seconds. I know I can do this. I need to look this up because I can't remember exactly how to do it. So for the quiz, there will be a lot of multiple choice. Can you guys remember which one it is? <clears throat> uh, and there will be, um, when we get to it, where is it? There's like a glossary for all the, the string codes. Uh, not string codes, what are they called? Percent sign D, percent sign like M, percent sign big B, percent sign little B, and all their meaning. So you guys may be able, depending on how I write the quiz, you guys may be able to use those. Um, but it's basically, if someone types in a date, you format that date yourself so that you can use it in your date and time module. So, like I said, we'll get there. Date time, so import date time. We're gonna go date time dot date time dot now. So that gives you the year. This So this right here is a date time object. It's basic, I don't know if that's the actual date time data type too long of a name, date time data type. Um, so we have the year, the month, the day, the hour, the second, or the minute, the second, and the milliseconds. So it goes to tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousand, millionth of a second, I think. That's a lot. But when you print this, right, so when you guys are writing your code and you print this information, it looks a lot neater. So again, you have the year, the day, or the month, the day, the sec, the minute, the sec, oh my gosh, the hour, the minute, the second, and then with the milliseconds attached to it. So you could do, just trying to think, you could use this for a random number, a random sum. You could add these numbers together, <clears throat> you know. Uh, print. Let's go. Date time equals dt dt. Oops, dt. So it's going to be the same thing. So then you go dt dot split. How do we split anything? You guys remember? Actually, you could do dt dot. Is it dt dot tab? Combine C time, date, date, destiny, full, I don't know what, hour, microsecond. Oh, forgot you don't need those. Microsecond. So this, let's see what type of number this is or what type of variable. It's an integer. Oh. So we'll do x equals this is just a fun little exercise I thought I put on the fly so if you guys think this is stupid let me know uh, you can't can you make a list out of a number nope ah but you can do 
list of a string of x. There we go. So this is going to be equal to y and sum equals sum of y. Oh, so for, you have to do oh, cause that, yeah, oh. What does type do again? For ch, for ch and y. Total is zero for ch and y. Total plus equal int of ch. All that for 28. <laughs> but, you know, then you do that again and you'll have a different number. And that could be your key for cipher or something like that. So speaking of which, I am getting a bunch of books. One of them is Cracking Codes with Python. It's how to write, like, codes in Python and how to crack, not crack them. It's not like hacking. It's just this type of, like, Caesar cipher, I think, is where if you give every letter a number in the alphabet, so A is 1, B is 2, 3 is C, if I gave you a number 1, 2, 3, that would be, the code would be A, B, C. But if you shift that so that A is 20, B is 21, C is 23, 22, <clears throat> you can make a code with just giving out numbers. And if you don't know the key, if you don't know the number to shift, if you don't know the number to shift the numbers of the alphabet, so if we go, if A is one, and we want our code to be A is 20, what is our key number? It's gonna be 19. And if we don't know that number 19, our code is useless. So you can have it be 119 and then just have it loop around whatever so that's something you could use this for but like I said those books are coming and if you guys want to look through them feel free um, take them home for a weekend I guess but uh, use them for your final I don't really care so they're just there for resources um, okay so let's get back to the book <clears throat> sure uh, Okay, so we can also tell it to equal a specific date and time. So we can do date time dot di dot date time, and this could be 2019. Let's do Halloween of 2019. Then what, what's the next thing I type in? Date time dot date time, and I have 2019. What when's Halloween? Month. So that's 30, 10. 10. 31. 31. Zero zero. Zero zero. Three zeros for our minute seconds. So now DT. Ugh. So that's Halloween. And what you can do is you can go day T dot year and get just the year day T dot hour, get the second or get the hour DT dot month and get the month. You can also put these together, dt.year, comma, dt.month, dt.day. And that's probably going to, yeah, there we go. What happens if we do a number that isn't like, what if this was 32? What do you think is going to happen? Will we get an error or will it just accept it? That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. So you can't put fake days in the... Do you guys think it's smart enough to determine leap years? Oh, oh, let's try. Oh, uh, oh. oh. Wait, hang on, I forgot a zero. I think 2016 was a sure, right? Yeah, I think 2020 is next. Oh, uh, hang on. So try 2020. One. Okay, so, so that is 2020. And it is February 29th. Oh, but now try it. <gasps> Yo! Hang on, but 2000 was not. Yeah, 2000 was a rewind. Or was it? Yeah. The 1900 wasn't. Adam, can you let him in? <clears throat> maximum, the minimum you can go 1970 anyway. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. 
Nope, I could change this to 28 and be a okay. It's just, I know that it's funny. If a year is divided by four, it's a leap year, unless it's also divided by 100, unless it's also divisible by 400. So it's like this right here. Uh, well, we had to code for that last year. Aren't you we? did have, yep, you had to code for that last year. I so 1800 is not going to be one. 1700 is not going to be one, but 1600 will be. So the code you wrote to determine your whether or not something was a leap year is totally being used or something similar in your date time function. <sighs> Essentially, yeah. <laughs> you wrote a function in a module to verify whether or not the information was valid or not. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so you can also, this one's like very, very niche, niche and kind of niche, niche, whatever the term is. Um, date, time, date, time, dot, and this is from timestamp. This is, a, so this will tell you a million, is it a million seconds or a million day? I think it's seconds. A million seconds after the unique epoch, so. Is there any reason why we would have to know that? I don't know. Okay. Just, it's in the book, and I want you guys to know that you can do that. Um, you guys can determine whether or not something start, is before or after. So, Halloween equals date, time, dot, date, time. Uh, so we're going to go 2019, comma, 10, comma, 31, comma, 0, 0, 0. New Year's equals date, time, dot, date, time, 2020, uh, 1, comma, 1, comma, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so if we do Halloween is greater than New Year's, what do you guys think? Is that true or false? False. So whatever number is greater is further in the future. It takes more seconds to get to that thing than the other thing. So if it's greater than that, it means you're saying that it will happen later because it takes more seconds to get to that time. So if we switch this, True equals, oh, hang on, dang it. So Halloween equal equal false. Does that make sense? Just like with the number of, just like when comparing strings, the bigger number is further along in the alphabet because you have to flip more pages in a dictionary to get to it. Uh, okay, so the time delta. <clears throat> time delta is still within date time. So we're gonna go delta and this will be date time dot time delta. Plus it just sounds cool to say time delta. Hmm. And you can say how many days from a certain point or the delta you want. So if you want something that's where 11 days, 10 hours, uh, not or minutes equals nine and seconds equal eight, that's our delta. So we can find out, we could use Halloween, oops, Halloween plus delta and that gives us 11 days, 10 hours, nine minutes, and eight seconds from Halloween. My right hand is really cold. That's oddly specific. And I've got some electric ones that are Well, it's like my left hand I can like put on my leg or whatever I can't. I think that's just like, I'm gonna explore the ones that Oh, <laughs> you can also how many seconds are in that uh, what is it delta the delta dot 
again, if you guys can't remember, you can either wait and you have all of these methods you can use with that specific variable. Total seconds, oops, hang on, I forgot. So in 11 days, 10 hours, nine minutes, and eight seconds, you have 986,948 minutes. So then you could format this uh, as comma D. Uh, the float, so whatever. Comma to comma dot zero F because we don't want any floats. And then it gives you one with commas. <coughs> Time delta. Again, we can find out days in the future. DT is date time. I'm getting so sick of typing date time. Date time dot now. I could, but it's fine. <laughs> but you're not actually that sick. Like, I'm not that sick of it. I'm not sick of, yeah. But no, because I would use DT, and then I'm using DT as variables here. So I don't want to screw anything up, but you could do you know a thousand because I'm not going to type every thousand equals you do date time dot time delta and you do days equal ten thousand oh should just be a thousand and then we do dt plus thousand and it will tell you the date here so if you print this. It will actually tell you a thousand days from today. It will be January 1st, 2022, which is pretty cool. So that's less than three years away. Some of you will be graduated. Wait. Oh, sophomore. Yeah. <sighs> Michael will be a senior. Oh, God, I can't imagine Michael will be a senior. Why not, Blake? Wow, he's such a freshman. Wow. Hey. Uh, you can do the same thing with <clears throat> days is 365 times 30. So you can figure out 30 years. In approximately 30 years, it will be 2049. Obviously, <laughs> but if you, it's it's 365 times 30, so it's not taking new account leap years. So, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to do something else, but uh, you don't want to do that. And this is okay. So this is <clears throat> I'll need to make this in a folder. I'll start here. If we want to pause until a specific date, let's say we want a code to run when we open our computer, but not run until 11 a.m. Does that make sense? So what we would do, import date, time, and time, and then we're gonna go get coffee. Oops. Yep, you do put in a while loop. So we want get coffee, what time do you want to get coffee, guys? 11. Date, time, what, when? 11, 2019. How about 158? No, we already have 11. I'm just, it was what day? Oh, I see. So. Whatever. Uh, date, time, what time did you say, Blake? 11. So at 11 a.m. we're gonna get, that's our get coffee time. So what we're gonna do is while date time dot date time dot now, it, should this be less than or greater than? Less than. Less than get underscore coffee time dot sleep one because again our computer can run through this code you know 30 times a second we don't want to do that we don't want our computer to be doing that so what we're going to do is we're just going to have it check wait hang on and then print time to get coffee 
Apparently something's wrong. Because it's not supposed to just jump down there. It's supposed to wait. It was not in the room. Yes, yeah, so there's just wait until I well, I think it has well, it skips. It skips this at all, because I mean, otherwise, if this is less I than, that. I mean, the print sentence is huh. not in the loop. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, but the reason it's not going into the loop is because this is false anyway. Date not dot now. Wait, four ten at eleven a.m. Oh, that's because it's a. That's tomorrow, yeah. Hang on, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> so now we wait. And we so wait till tomorrow. 11 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> That's really lame, right? What? We're getting a multi threading, yeah. But this is why you would use multi threading. If you wanted your code to be doing something else while it's waiting to tell you to go get coffee. You could be running two separate programs. Is that the better way to do it? I don't know, it depends on what you're trying to code. But for now, this is kind of boring. Waiting for 11 tomorrow. <laughs> I think you can wait, we can play a game. In fact, did you know that loading screen games were copied or like patented? Patented by, by, cap by who is it? I don't know, but they were patented. But now they're unpatented, I think. And no one does them. I know it's so lame. I loved the couple games that I've played with loading screen games. It was so much fun. Dude, when I first got the PlayStation 2, Spyro Enter the Dragon, the game that first came out for PlayStation 2, had a loading screen for the loading screen. No. Yes. Wait, what? <laughs> there was a loading screen. It said loading, and it was a black screen loading with a bar that you saw for maybe half a second. Yeah. And then you saw the loading screen of Spyro flying through the clouds. Yeah. I was yeah. like... A loading screen for the loading screen? I mean, they gotta load it somehow. They can pull a No Man's Sky and be like, we have no loading screens, but we'll put you through mandatory two minute cuts every time you want to jump again. <laughs> all right, so our, our, that's all right, we don't wanna keep doing that because that's annoying. Time to sleep. So, now in the book, converting date time objects into strings. So, like the book says, staring at this is not very nice right so if you print it it makes it look a little neater but there's also things you can do um, to make it look prettier so that you can actually understand what it looks like and you can put it in a different instead of having 294 you could have April of 2019 can you print it for that? You, you don't pretty print it. <laughs> but what you do is you use date time dot S T R standard format time. S T R F standard format time. Okay. And so what is our DT? Our DT is today, well, it was seven minutes ago. So we are going to do dt dot strf time and how do we want this to come out we could do again I'm just gonna in the book there's a list of these so it depends on how you want it to look how you want the code to tell the user what the date and time and all that is this is up to you so wow we could do yeah there's like 12 of them. Well, let's do as a string percent sign Y slash percent sign lowercase m percent sign D space percent sign hour colon percent sign minute colon percent sign second bracket. Uh, ugh, too many of those. <laughs> Oops, wrong H. Guys, it's apparently April o'clock. <laughs> so that looks a little neater than all of this. Um, but let's do, instead of that, let's do, 
Let's see what what who can tell me what percent sign I does. I'm not. I can't remember. It's in the book. Do you want capital I? Yes, sir. Yeah, that will give us one to twelve as opposed to thirteen twenty thirteen. Yes, yeah, so we're going to percent sign I colon percent sign M space percent. What does percent sign P do? Did you, do you have the book open? Yeah. Good. That's exactly what I want you guys to be doing right now. Like this isn't a gotcha. And I just want I want you guys to go. Oh, okay. So you can do that. Let's also do this one. Looks like my most. I like this one the most. Percent sign capital B of percent sign Y. Uh oh. What I do? Hang on. Uh, I should use double quotes more often. April of nineteen. Is never using double quotes. Wow. Because we're cool like that in 19. <laughs> what if we wanted to say April of 2019? What number would I use? Yep. How would we? How would we make this? All right, real quick, I want you guys to come up with the code to make it, you know, 2.05 p.m. on April, what's the date? 10 comma space 2019. So this is what, I want you guys to give me, you know, the percent sign I colon space blah, 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 blah to make uh, the, what gets displayed here to look just like this. So I'll give you guys a minute or two for that. I'll pause the video because I feel like this is a 40 minute video right now. Do this at home viewers, then come back to press play when you're ready. <laughs> do that because like, I'm not gonna do it. It's a YouTube video. Unless I might, I might, I might do it. You won't do it unless you might. You won't do it unless you might. Good job, Adam. What? No, no, not this project. I'm saying like... At no, no. At YouTube, when they yeah. say, pause to figure it out yourself or do it yourself and come back, you don't do it I don't. unless you might. I, unless I might. <laughs> Thank you, Micah. What? Micah's got... What, what's going on in my head, Micah's acting up. <laughs> wow. Anyway. It's like you're going to 